So here is the story of James Childers, also known as Jim Childers. And I'm reading this from Wikipedia, and then I'll talk a little bit more about him and the connection that he might possibly have had to the disappearance of Kimberly Sue Jones in West Virginia. James Childers, born February the 8th, 1964, died June the 2nd, 2009. He was a confessed American serial killer and an arsonist. On June the 1st, 2009, he sent a package of letters and a two-hour long recording to the police station in Clarksburg, West Virginia. It contained confessions to at least five murders and four arsons. After examining his testimony, authorities located the bodies of two women in a place where John Childers had indicated and they moved in to arrest him. He committed suicide by shooting himself in the head in a motel room. Little is known about Childers' childhood. He was born February the 8th, 1964, and he grew up on a 96-acre farm that his family owned in Clarks near Clarksburg in Copen, West Virginia. After leaving school, Childers moved to Clarksburg, where in the following years he took up many jobs, mainly in the construction industry and working handyman jobs. In the 1990s, he began to show signs of depression and started to abuse drugs and alcohol, for which he underwent treatment. Despite this, he was a law-abiding citizen and seemed to have friendships and acquaintances. People described him as friendly, who was often helpful with his neighbors and would stroll around the neighborhood. On June 1, 2009, a packet containing four letters and an audio tape confession was delivered to the Clarksburg Police Station. Most of this was inco incoherent rambling, but also had Childers admitting to five murders and four arsons that had occurred in the last few years. Now, the arsons really did happen, and he, and he was not even a suspect until he confessed. He did not express remorse for what he had done, He claimed to have motive for the killings and admitted to excessive resentment, distrust, and anger issues directed at mostly his relatives. Childers claimed that he had buried four of the victims on the family farm in Braxton County, West Virginia, and discarded another in Barber County. He additionally named other potential victims who he had planned to kill, and told police that he had tried to pay an acquaintance to provide information about the whereabouts of his ex-girlfriend. A few hours after listening to the tapes, officers were dispatched, and to their horror they found the skeletal remains of two female corpses, with the one in Barber County identified as 26-year-old Carrie Lynn Baker, who had gone missing in Clarksburg in the summer of 2008. According to the autopsy report, she had died from blunt force trauma to the head. The second body found on the Childers family farm was identified as 45-year-old Carolyn Sue Sauerwine, Sauerwine. A friend and an acquaintance of Childers's since 2001. She had been shot in the head. Police issued an arrest warrant for Childers, who was last seen at the Townhouse Motel in Clarksburg. The following day, officers surrounded the motel, and when they approached and let Childers know that they were there to arrest him, he took out a gun and shot himself in the head. After confirming his death, investigators, together with dog handlers, combed across the 96-acre farm where, according to his testimony, there were at least three other people buried, but no further remains were found. Childers became the prime suspect in the murder of Ralph Hill, a friend of his who had been killed in 2004. According to the FBI, Childers classified himself as a serial killer.
and the FBI agreed. The investigation into his crimes is currently at a standstill as the police were unable to link any missing persons or homicides back to Childers, who was known to contact women through newspaper ads and use different vehicles for transportation. He was most known to drive a 1986 red Dodge truck with a white top. In 2017, Lost Valley Studios filmed a documentary titled Mountain of the Missing, and it centered around the events in Clarksburg. In an attempt to find evidence about Childers' crimes or his claims to have been involved in these disappearances and murders, during filming, they interviewed friends, neighbors, as well as law enforcement officers who shared pieces of information about Childers' private life. The filmmakers tried to gain access to the family farm in order to locate burial sites on the property, but his relatives would not allow this, and the police also refused to issue a search warrant. They didn't want the film crew to go in there and start digging around and mess up what might possibly have been um, burial sites even though they had not been able to find any. But in the tapes that he had sent to the police he had claimed that he had buried these bodies so well and that he that there was some debris and stuff on the property, old cars and things like that that he he knew how to make it look like the property was undisturbed. This Ralph Hill that died in 2004, he was a property owner, and I'm not sure if he was the landlord of James Childers or if he did work for him as a handyman. He had made a will and had left everything he owned to James Childers. Like I said, I could find nothing, and the, and the police didn't go into any details about whether he actually named Kimberly Sue Jones as one of his victims. They did find a man dead in an apartment in the area where Childers lived, but they also said that he was known to have been a male prostitute and that when he was found dead, um, it looked as though he had been with someone leading up to his death. So they thought maybe that he had been someone that he had brought back to his apartment that was paying him for sex that had murdered him. But they did a rape kit on the man, but they said that sometime during the time of his after his death, the rape kit had been lost and it was never investigated. And they also said that they took no DNA from James Childers before he was buried. He was cremated. Why did the police not take his DNA? Did this man have fan? They said he had relatives. Could they not do DNA from relatives to see if there's a link? If they find any more bodies turn up? or to test the, and like I said, they took a rape kit on this dead man, but never took DNA from Childers, and the DNA, the rape kit got lost. It sounds really, some people might look at it and say, this is very like a conspiracy to cover, to cover stuff up. A serial killer defined by the FBI as the unlawful killing of two or more victims by the same offender in separate events. Separate events is a key phrase when def defining a serial killer. A perpetrator must commit several murders over a period of time, which makes each murder separate. A double or triple homicide is not a serial killing. So they're saying if someone walks into a grocery store and shoots three people dead, that's not a serial killer. But if they shoot three people dead over the course of six years or something, then they're a serial killer. Because they're killing more people in separate incidents. 
Most serial killers do leave a calling card or have a distinct method, method of murder. This is why I, maybe I would believe that this man that left everything he owned to James Childers was possibly a victim of Childers, but the gay um, male prostitute, I, I don't know. Because, like I said, most serial killers have a method and they have a type. If you see a serial killer like John Wayne Gacy always went after young, vulnerable men. And uh, Ted Bundy went after young, vulnerable women. They have a type. They may, ha they may kill sometimes at random, but for the most part, they kill a certain type of person. So I'm not sure if this male prostitute was this man's victim or not. So police did open the investigation. There's very few details here. This is dated 2014, and it just says that um, even though Childers had confessed to killing at least five women, if not more, only two bodies were ever found on his property. Carolyn Sourwine and Carrie Lynn Baker. It does say that police are going to, now keep in mind, like I said, this was 2014, so nine years ago, they were going to research the property again. They are also, they were also working with the state medical examiner on a five-year-old case of a Clarksburg man found dead in his home. They would not identify the victim or comment on whether the man's body would have to be exhumed but they say that Childers knew the man and was now considered the FBI's prime suspect. And there was another cold case that they were going to review, but the police didn't offer any details. So I don't know if that could have been the case of Kimberly Sue Jones. Um, if the next search of the family's property is fruitless, there will be no point in researching it again. We will have come to a dead end. When Childers killed himself, he took a lot of details and information with him. The reason that they, and they don't go into a lot of details here, and I've, I've continued to search before I'm, you know, finished the video to give as much detail as I can find is that they believe that he had a certain lifestyle and they don't go into detail about that but like I said previously they said that the the man that was found dead in his apartment was a male prostitute known to the area in this article it just says they do not believe that Childers had a general hatred for women there were a couple of women named on a list to, who were thought to have been romantically involved with Childers, and they reached out to them, but they did not return their messages. Um, it just says here, he had specific connections to specific lifestyles, and I'll have to leave it at that. So they don't go into any details about what these lifestyles were, but... I don't think that anyone had connected him in any way of being involved with other men, but then again, maybe he was, and the police found some evidence that they just wanted to kind of keep under wraps while they investigated missing persons or murders. He, in his letters and his um, tapes that he sent to the police, he talked about having lived in a camper type trailer on his family's property and that he had been killing women for years and bringing them out there and burying their bodies and he knew how to fix the ground and stuff to make it look undisturbed and that while he's telling the police that these bodies are buried there and he even gives a couple of specific locations where they actually did find the two bodies. He 
says the other bodies will never be found for so for whatever reason he decided to confess to these crimes but the police could find no evidence of that because he wouldn't give details and it was almost like it was a cat and mouse game with the police um, neighbors say that he took frequent strolls around the small city but no one ever thought of him as being troubled that he was always friendly and quick to help people um, Childers had confessed in his tapes that he had considered killing three local law enforcement officers. He bragged that he was carrying a gun and could have shot police officers when, when he came into contact with them. He named the officers, but the police didn't go into details about who they were. He had no criminal record, although police planned to charge him with making harassing phone calls. The FBI labeled Childers a serial killer based on characteristics they gleaned from a, a, a review of his notes and ramblings. Childers killed more than two people, both male and female, at different times with different motives. He also committed other crimes such as a series of arsons and taunted the police over these arsons. The FBI described Childers as egotistical and said he believed no one could judge him because no one understood him. Childers never sounded apologetic. He didn't seem to have any remorse or guilt. He fantasized about killing people and blamed his urges from, on everything from his upbringing to drug use. He calls himself a misfit in the world. This is from a website called Only In Your State. This is published in 2017. No one in Clarksburg, West Virginia, knew he was a serial killer and arsonist. Many people thought they knew him. He was a local handyman described as being nice and helpful. His secrets started to come to light after his death. James Childress was 45 years old when he confessed. This is the reason why the FBI profilers believe he, he had killed many people prior to this because most serial killers don't start out killing when they get to be older. They start out killing when they're younger. It may start out with torture of animals or murder of animals that leads to the torture of human beings or the desire to kill and torture people and they start slowly to um, build up their courage and their skill set to do this until eventually they begin to kill. And some of them just have a bloodthirst for killing and they, they just do it. In 2009, Clarksburg Police Lieutenant Robert Matheny received a package in the mail. There were several letters and two-hour audio tapes containing chilling confessions to five murders and four arsons. He claimed responsibility for two sets of fire on Northcott Street and other locations around Clarksburg. The man that died mysteriously, who was killed, um, had left all of his belongings and had made a, uh, I guess it was something like a will, and left everything to this James Childers. Um, they didn't know each other. I think maybe Childers had worked for this man. Maybe he rented from him. But no one really knows if this man actually did this or if this was forged. And I don't know what the outcome of that was. They did investigate, but there was no evidence, and Childers was dead at that point, so they couldn't really find any more evidence other than his meandering writings and ramblings and these confessions, and they had found no more bodies on the property. Um, the police have not gotten search warrants to search the property, and the family has not given permission for any outside uh, searchers to come onto the property to search. 
being that there is family, that James Childers did have family, and I don't know if he had any children. There's no mention of him having been married or having children. But I would think that maybe police might want to ask the family to voluntarily give DNA just in the event that maybe some bodies do turn up to see if there is DNA connected to these murders or these dead bodies um, connected to James Childers in the event that he was telling the truth. Because he was telling the truth on at least two murders. He didn't mention either one of the two men that they found dead, but they did link this Ralph Hill to him. I only made this video even though there was little detail to go on because for some reason he was linked to the possibility to, of being linked to the disappearance of Kimberly Sue Jones. Police never said there was any evidence of that and I don't know that her name was ever even mentioned in these confessions. If it was, police have sat on that. I personally believe that she was a victim of her ex-husband and it all came down to him wanting custody of the child and wanting her out of the way. And as for James Childers, maybe someday they will get more evidence to prove that he killed these people that he claimed to have killed. Why he took his own life when he um, had taunted the police wanted to play cat and mouse with the police and and confess to these murders and then take his own life without leaving behind any evidence. It was almost like a, one more way to taunt the police before he ended his life. Thanks for watching.